today we're going to learn about semiconductors. All of our modern conveniences we use in our daily lives rely on semiconductors. These include things such as cell phones, remotes, portable speakers, cars, and hair dryers. These are cell phones without batteries in them, so you can see what's inside your cell phone. trip on Friday. So in 1947, Bell Labs invented the first transistor, which is shown here. Transistors were first used in radios and then in calculators and later in computers. And so when transistors are combined together to make a computing device, it's called a chip, which is shown here. The early computers took up entire rooms. They required uh, lots of power and electricity to operate. And over time, back in the 90s, computers ended up looking something like this, which don't look too dissimilar from the desktop computers we have now. And now we have computers so small and powerful that we can fit in our pocket. How do these transistors work? All materials around you contain tiny particles called electrons. These particles create electricity as they move around from one place to another. In some materials, electrons can move with ease. We call these materials conductors. Copper and gold are examples. We use conductors when we want electricity to flow, like into a light bulb. In other materials, electrons are stuck, making it difficult for the material to conduct electricity. These materials are called insulators. Some examples are plastic, rubber, and wood. We use insulators when we don't want electricity to flow. An example is the wooden poles that hold up the big power lines that bring electricity into our houses. Semiconductors are another class of materials. Semiconductors can behave like an insulator or a conductor by adding or removing electrons. The most commonly used semiconductor is silicon. Back to transistors. A transistor can be thought of as a switch for electrons. It allows for the flow of electrons to be turned on or off and is built from a combination of conductors, insulators, and semiconductors. Transistors use the unique semiconductor property that allows for them to quickly change between acting like a conductor and acting like an insulator. When we add electrons, it will act as a conductor and electrons can flow. When we remove electrons, it will act as an insulator and electrons cannot flow. The ability to control electron flow with transistors is an extremely powerful function of semiconductor chips and allows for math calculations and storing data, the very things that we use our computers and cell phones for today. How many transistors are in your phone, do you know? 20,000. 20,000. I, I, I heard uh, there are 20,000 transistors. So what I'm showing you here is a, a wafer with a 10 million of transistors. I'm going to show you how these are made. Did anyone hear about silicon wafer before? Who wants to be volunteer? We are going to crack the wafers. Okay, good. All the silicon atoms are well organized. When you make a little crack, it goes on the same direction. The building that you're in is the Applied Research Building. It's brand new, and you guys are the first tour of students that have ever been through here. So we build things that are used on telescopes, but we also make them for satellites. So there's about 10 of them in space right now that were made here. Welcome to our lab. Are you guys excited? Yeah. 
You don't want spikes in the rate because then it, you can't control how thick it is. It's spraying down and it's removing layers of silicon. Put it into our tank of acid. Right now is a very exciting time to be in this industry. You get to learn, you get to try new things and use your own ideas. You guys all want to be scientists? Yes. yes. Yeah. Semiconductor companies are rapidly expanding across the country. This field is exploding in the U.S., including here in Arizona. The U.S. will see 460,000 semiconductor-related jobs by 2030. The jobs range from lab technicians, to engineers, to scientists, to business people. 